Hi friends, I'm Dharmala Shri from Smart Leaders IAS. Hope by this time your prelims preparation started its engine and uh, believe yourself and uh, prepare well. Today we will see the article which came on 16th February 2018. So here we have list of articles. So the topics which came in the newspaper on February 16th are there are some six topics and we are going to see the detailed editorial of three topics. I'll see why we are not seeing these three. The first we are going to see about the Edipa crisis, which is about the education, especially teacher education in India. And the next one is, should Supreme Court proceedings be live streamed? It is because of a case in Supreme Court getting highlighted now so this is an another significant uh, area for our preparation and the third one is protecting the girl child and i want to take this editorial because ne there is an awareness in needed for female genital mutilation so i'm taking this topic today so these three topics i'm going to take today and the next three topics change of god it is a uh, regard to south african political crisis so we will see it later sometime and the next one is making up for the last time so this is about india and canada relationship so this india canada relationship we will see in the coming days so we will get more articles in the next next days so we'll see in see on that time and this one is we will see it this gem of scam it is about uh, nirav modi and pnb so we'll take exclusively separate uh, video for this pnb scam in the economic session so let us move on to the article now for our exam point of view what can be the area with respect to education so uh, usually upsc tends to ask the areas which whichever india is lacking or whichever india wants to rise its potential for example agriculture it is lacking and it is a crisis state and the same way in the science and technology in one area like space technology we are uh, rising in a very high way so it attempts to ask and the public private partnership we are not doing good so upsc used to ask this can be a potential area for upsc we can uh, think so many areas around the education itself so the first one is access to the education and the universal education and uh, this is a decadal year after uh, right to education act 2009 so we can expect uh, performance of right to education act also and the next one is new education policy because TSA, it was recommended by TSR Subramanian committee he passed away recently so this can also be an another area of question and the next one is top heavy model in higher education because funding goes to the top institutes like IITs and IIMs so this model is a flaw or uh, the in education system totally needs to be revamped or the partners in the education and uh, this question 2015 higher education like uh, global institutes are coming into India. So whether this will provide any effectiveness to the higher education system. Are we uh, not doing enough to move to the 21st century education reforms or we are going backward. So these are the broad areas. So prepare these areas and uh, whenever the education comes, it is a public education and the private education. Now we know that sustainable development goal four it is equitable and inclusive education. I repeat, sustainable development goal four. It is equitable and inclusive education. So India, equitable education is also a question mark and inclusive education is also a question mark. So these are the broader areas we can expect the question. And apart from that, this article which uh, directly speaks about but why India is missing the aspect of quality teacher education to promote quality education in our system. The main crux of the article is, first, author says that Kothari Commission in 1966, they recommended 6% of GDP should be given to education. But still, after 50 years, we are giving in a near to 3% GDP. So the finance and the education. So how much government spending for the education? And it's a main thing. And the second one is, Author speaks support Justice Verma Committee in uh, 1990s qualitative teachers are not produced because of corruption in the regulatory frameworks and he also says that it became stagnant and uh, not efficient so we need to overhaul the teacher education system itself way back in 1990s so it is still not implemented in our country so this is our main concern because in 2014 McKinsey report says that 
only 34% of graduates of, from India are employable. So, which is very poor because South Korea produces 98% of its employees are skilled and multi-skilled. And the next one, this year in budget speech, our finance minister told the importance of teacher education and he says that at four years integrated BA degrees, which is already in NCRT circles, so it can be widened through all, all circles. And the next one is quality of teacher training. It is generally poor in our country because normally our go government concerns in-service training to the teachers and not about pre-service training. That is in-service training. I repeat, in-service training and the pre-service training. So in-service training is once the teacher is enrolled into, into the classrooms, after that he is given training, that is in-service training. And the pre-service training is, is getting the selected candidates, I mean, who already done the qualification works and uh, getting those candidates for the class. So these are the two things. And the next one is, we are missing the aspect that is teacher and the higher education. The teacher are, is not qualitative enough. It will impact our higher education system. It becomes a vicious cycle and will impact the higher education system of India. And the next one is in 2000's Yashpal Committee report. This report mainly concerns about renovation and rejuvenation of higher education in India. The author feels very much because government spending on teacher education is very minimal because now go every government like state governments or other governments focuses on cost cutting in the education so the employment opportunities are more for contractual teachers and not for the permanent teachers so these are one area and the next one is spending generally it is very less except few states like tamil nadu and kerala and the next thing is as i've mentioned earlier sustainable development goal for is the equitable and inclusive education is our goal so if we need to address this we need to address our concerns so these are the crux of the article. So first, uh, they are telling about the budget and second, they are telling about the quality of training to the teachers and the third one, they are telling about the corruptions in the regulatory framework of the institution that is teacher education and the fourth one is suggestions that is four-year BA programs for uh, producing qualitative teachers and the next one is renovation and, and rejuvenation in the higher education. So please take a note of these things. The present status of teacher education in India, it is one of the weakest links of our education system. So that is why I told you earlier, so when the teacher is weakened, so it will replicate in the students. So the unskilled workforce will create and the, again, they will become, once they will become a teacher, it becomes a vicious uh, circle. We need to address this one. And the next one is people teacher ratio. It is high in some areas like Bihar because 80 is to one teacher so it is very high no no very high than the standard number and in some areas only one teacher is present in the school that is single teacher schools where almost uh, eight percent of our uh, schools in the country running in this way so single teacher are, and the people teacher ratio it is very high simply rough says that uh, the inadequate teachers for our students we increased the students enrollment ratio in schools but we failed to increase the enrollment of teachers in the schools. The next one is teachers' performance and the absenteeism. In government schools, I mean public schools, performance of teachers is not adequately mentioned or are not adequately monitored. This is an important concern because accountability of the teachers in the public school is very less and it is not monitored also. And the next one is absenteeism in the public schools are very high. However, when compared with the private schools, the potential from the uh, teachers are very high when compared to the public schools. And the next one is when we providing the teacher education institutes, government are giving a space to the private sector. So 90% of the private sectors are running the institutes and when it is not regulated properly and also the corruption entered already way back in 1990s, it shows that now they are occupied with the less infrastructure and uh, mismanagement and uh, not fit to provide the service at all and even though if they are providing they are providing all the pre-service trainings so we need to create uh, government uh, regulated pre-service training institutes or we need to provide a excellence center for teacher training institutes in the region wise or in a state wise uh, and the central level and the next one is as i've told you cost cutting management techniques followed by states and it is replicated in the hiring contractual teachers so it is another measure because of reducing amount to the education sector and the next one it is highly concerned one 
because World Development Report 2018 which themes learning to the rise of education from us. Here India is uh, ranked below bottom two and the next one is vast amount of underspending per students. Now we find that states like Bihar, Rajasthan where where underspending is very high for the students even after employing contractual teachers and all so these areas needs to be attacked so what are the changes we need to bring teacher education to become more qualitative so we have addressed the concerns the main is spending and the next one is uh, quality education institutes and the regulatory frameworks so structural changes in the teacher teacher education is a need of our so what we need to do UNESCO recommends all this is UNESCO says that professionalization of the teaching profession here and um, we are trying to say professionalism is not so far entered into our teaching profession so we need to focus on this and the next one is constructivist methodologist has to be adopted it is very simple that this innovation practices need to be developed by the teachers when they are taking classes when they are in their training period And this needs to be replicated in other classes also. This is the constructivist methodologies. It is simply creative learning. And the next one is develop schools of excellence in teacher education as I've told you earlier. And the next one is training the untrained with the quality. So quality is our main mantra. So far we have done enough progress in our education system. We provide access to the students through so many schemes like midday meal schemes and all. And uh, through Sarva Siksha Abhiyan, we are in able to reduce the dropouts and uh, we, we are providing free and compulsory education through RTE at 2009. So however, the quality aspect is still a long way to achieve. So we, now we need to focus the quality in teacher education so that we can expect the quality in the education system. And the next one is nowadays reports are saying that focusing on learning outcome is better. So a learning based outcomes are the need of that. However, UNESCO against this concept learning outcome because UNESCO is m focusing more on behavioral outcomes of and subject knowledge. So these are the two areas UNESCO is focusing Indian education to concentrate more in order to meet the 21st century challenges. And the next one is government spending, not underspending, not uh, spending in the top heavy model. So it needs to be spent on, on the needy basis whether it is infrastructure, whether it is appointment of teachers, whether it is uh, providing lab facilities and all. And the accountability on the monitoring mechanism for the teachers are highly essential. So we know that uh, Dr. S. Radhakrishna, a former president of India, is a teacher and we are celebrating every year uh, September 5 as a teacher's day. And he gives us teachers as the backbone of our education system. Teachers should be the best minds in the country. So we cannot compromise in creating the best minds in the country because it is our intellectual capital. Well, these are the references uh, taken for this article. Shall we move to the next article? Next article is should Supreme Court proceedings be live streamed? So this is again an, another uh, interesting area for UPSC as well because the past 60 years technology it is not yet touched in the judiciary part. It revamped the entire Indian systems, revolutionized the Indian ways in so many places like um, digital India and all but so far the digital technologies are not entered into the judiciary now we are trying so many models like e-codes online uh, petitions and uh, so so many steps we are uh, taking so this is an another area for our uh, technology in Supreme Court so we can see this article so we can expect the question maybe so access to the proceedings in the court can be a right to justice so access to justice and right to justice and whether it will promote transparency and uh, I have mentioned earlier technology in the Supreme Court. We are expecting uh, one question compulsory from judiciary area. The trend is continuing from 13, 14, 15, 16 because we, uh, either it is a, about judiciary or whether it put uh, judicial appointments or uh, judicial adventurism or uh, judicial activism. Whenever you are uh, come across any article in the newspaper, so take a collection of it and try to interlink all the concepts of judiciary as a one bunch. It will be very helpful for you during time of revision. So the crux of the article is senior advocate of Supreme Court, Ms. Indrani Jaising, she filed a case in the Supreme Court at, uh, that she wants that Supreme Court proceedings should be live streamed. And she clarifies that 
but not all the cases like uh, family cases like uh, relationship cases and all we are not going into that so let those cases be private but there are some cases interested to the public life for example women entry in the sabrimala temple or the right to privacy or the other right so let this be open to the public because the court uh, proceedings are uh, said to be public I, i mean the court proceedings some public can sit in the sit as a audience to watch the proceedings however it is not known to the entire public so in order to educate the public about the judicial proceedings why can't we make it as a live streaming that is video recording and the audio recording because from 2004 we started at uh, in lok sabha and rajya sabha so i repeat from 2004 lok sabha and rajya sabha live streaming started and in order to promote the transparency when the legislature started why can't the judiciary also start the step to promote transparency in the judiciary and the next one she says that at uh, if we didn't promote the judiciary we can uh, still depend on the media for getting the important judgment cases often in times we are getting the false news or the fake news from the media also so if the live streaming happens we can depend directly the right source from the judiciary so we uh, we can get the right source and the access to the public and the public can be educated these are the broad objectives why uh, live streaming can be promoted in the supreme court cases and she says that not in every courts like high courts and uh, district courts she wants why can supreme court initiate that is her main concern is there any other countries following the live streaming yes of course so many countries in us audio recording is possible however video recording is not possible the camera is not allowed inside the courts and uh, in uk video recording is possible and they are following however the redistribution of the footage is not allowed to everyone so it is restricted to the courts alone and the next one is uh, video recording which is open to public is mainly canada and australia they both are very successful on this and the next one an international court of justice they are following uh, live streaming in order to promote transparency naresh mirashkar case says that public right to watch the proceedings is possible because it is passed by anonymously in the supreme court we have the right to watch the proceedings when there is a way to build the bridges why should we want to build the walls so why to build the walls where we can build bridges now use digital technology as a connectivity rather than the abstraction these are references taken for this article the next all we are going to see is protect the girl chat at which came on 16th feb the main crux of the article is that there is a there is one practice which is happening in the bora community of women which is almost 7 years of age the practice will start and it is happening almost from uh, 1400 years the women who are against this called as a katna or kafs that is female circumcision they are calling there are some group of women they are uh, okay with the practice uh, they are seeing are the supporters of the practice they are saying that it is a religious purity called as takhrat and they are saying that it is not in, in the name of female genital mutilation it is very tiny excision and uh, and it is very harmless and peaceful so it it is no way related to the violence against women or uh, the affecting the dignity of the women so this is the another view but however uh, the activist against this female genital mutilation says that it is a type 1a of female genital mutilation according to the who where it says it will lead to bleeding excessive bleeding and a painful sex and the psychological trauma they have undergoing is very huge and uh, in the small child they are not even able to tolerate the pain and now the voices first time in india they are speaking it very openly and the voices are very loud so many campaigns have started changed that org also started in its online petition and uh, it is given to the women and child development ministry as well already told it is practiced in africa Big, uh, so many years before and uh, latin america new zealand and very shockingly us also without knowledge they are undergoing this practice of uh, female genital mutilation we need not to go into this what is the type 1a type 2a type 3 type 4 and all there are so many practices whether it is small one or uh, pre- precise one or not on the other hand activists are asking for dignity and violence against the women so what as aspirants we need to do the first one is i have put this article mainly to know about this thing because i want to give you an awareness about uh, the such a happening it is happening in india and that community bora community already have taken so many steps and one such step they are taking is to convince the traditional cutters whatever they are doing is a harmful practice and the loss of people and the lives pains to the girl child 
uh, needs to be explained and uh, possibly if whether any rehabilitation to those people well, available as it is getting convinced as a medical practice now these actors convincing indian medical association that at female genital mutilation it is a violence and it is a violation against the fundamental code of medical ethics doing no harm to others so it is creating harm and uh, doing no harm to others is a medical code of ethics so they are convincing indian medical association also and the other hand and the other hand they are filing pal in the supreme court also and the other hand they are fighting with the religious hardcore religious people sentiment and is there any country who uh, which banned this uh, female genital mutilation recently australia did and, and uh, their individuals can be convicted for uh, doing female genital mutilation and uh, one more darker side to this picture was without any law india is doing so only now we came to know that this practice is very open and wide in india so without any law regulating this india becomes a hub for uh, fgm for expats and the foreigners and who says that all procedures that involve the altering or injuring the female genitalia for non medical purpose and is recognized internationally as a violation of human rights of girls and women so all forms of fgm whether it is a tiny excision or it is a harmful one and it is violating the rights of women and it is it is a violence against the women uh, with respect to who these are references uh, taken for this article we can expect this um, female genital mutilation at least uh, in a prelims aspect also and uh, you can prepare the areas for essays uh, you can very well utilize because one side we are going for the empowerment of women and the other side that we are trying to convince a medical team also like where that is female genital mutilation is no harm and all so these are the broader areas possibly they can ask this area we will in the future classes we will cover the pnb and the nirav modi case very exclusively india canada relationship in a very exclusive uh, way managing your time and uh, consistency in your efforts bring the desired results prepare well all the very best thank you